So there are roughly two dozen Democrats vying for their party's nomination in 2020 to take on President Donald Trump, but those efforts might be wasted energy and a moot point as multiple signs are increasingly pointing towards Trump's re-election. It was recently revealed that Trump was predicted to win re-election in a landslide by a non-partisan market research organization with a history of accurate predictions. Their prediction was based on purely economic factors and assumed that those key metrics and indicators would stay strongly the same up to the 2020 election. That seems to be the same conclusion reached by a significant majority of Wall Street insiders and investors, at least according to a recent survey conducted by the international investment banking firm known as RBC Capital Markets as reported by CNBC. It is worth nothing immediately that the survey of 141 equity-focused institutional investors was conducted after special counsel Robert Mueller had submitted his final report for the Department of Justice and it had been made clear that there was no campaign collusion with Russia, an announcement that undoubtedly lifted a cloud of uncertainty from the president's administration. That survey revealed that more than 70% of respondents believed that President Trump would be re-elected in 2020. The survey also asked about the many potential Democratic candidates who would ultimately face off against Trump, but only former Vice President Joe Biden drew any considerable level of support. There is no question that financial markets are particularly sensitive to who holds the presidency and what the president's agenda may be. Case in point is the stunning reveal of the stock market in the aftermath of Trump's 2016 election as a market riled up nearly 500 points in the two days following this event and increased as much as 8% overall between then and the end of the year. The spike was due to the confidence inspired in the markets by Trump's election and the promise of tax cuts and regulatory reform that would create a much more business-friendly environment in the United States than had been the case under the prior administration. And this is something that me and other content creators have been saying since President Trump had got elected is that President Trump is a jobs and money president and he would be doing very well in terms of the market, economic market kind of thing. And Trump proves himself to be doing just that. Now, in the case under the Obama administration, what Obama did was uh, he made it very, very hard for business owners, especially small business owners, to start up to have the funds in order to start their businesses alongside with hammering them with taxes and regulatory bullcrap that Obama was very famous for doing. Obama loved taxes and he loved regulations, especially aimed at the small businesses. And even though the stock market continued to go up under Obama, the confidence within the market was very, very low because of the people's understanding of what Obama was about. Obama was no favor of small businesses and investors and stock market people like that. Now, Trump is no fan of the stock market either in terms of how he made his money because Trump didn't make his money in the stock market. He made his money in real estate, being a real estate developer and so on and so forth. But Trump understands business. And a lot of people knew that, so when Trump was elected, we saw that the stock market had boomed with confidence. Because the markets understood that Trump was going to bring tax relief to a lot of people, not only to the middle class and the poor, but also to the business owners who deserved it. Versus the Obama administration, who didn't like businesses, who hammered small business owners with taxes and regulations and tried to get them out of business. I mean, Obama was very vicious to small business owners and the markets and the country suffered under it. And that is mainly because Obama was not a money and jobs president. Obama was the social media, identity politics, groovy with the cameras kind of president. He was the liberal messiah. And that might have been all cool and hip with the kids, but in terms of a business strategy and how business owners viewed him, they did not view him very, very fondly. And we had always known that Trump was going to be a money and jobs president, that he was going to put focus on money, jobs, building the border wall, and so on and so forth. We all knew that Trump was not going to engage in all of this identity politics bullcrap that the Democrats had loathed themselves in. 
Now, how is this going to play into 2020? Now, like I said before, I give Trump's chances a 80-20% chance that he wins the re-election in 2020 because obviously it's like, look at his opponents. Who is going to go against Trump? Creepy Joe Biden, crazy socialist Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, Christian Gillibrand. We all know how it's going to play out if Donald Trump goes against Joe Biden. We all know how it's going to play out if Donald Trump goes against Bernie Sanders. Sanders, and those are your two most viable Democrats within, you know, the Democratic field, is creepy Joe Biden and crazy Bernie Sanders. We have a Joe Biden who's probably not even going to run, period, and if it actually turns out to be Joe Biden, I mean, uh, Bernie Sanders... President Trump is going to wipe the floor with him. Bernie Sanders is a socialist, a crazy socialist. How is Bernie Sanders going to appeal to the working class Rust Belt and the business Democrats? When he wants to raise taxes up towards, you know, 70% or, or is that AOC his buddy buddy? If Bernie Sanders was elected in 2020, we would see an economic collapse because of the non-confidence that would be injected into the marketplace. Bernie Sanders would do everything in his power to go after these businesses and go after these Wall Street executives and investors. But not only that, Bernie Sanders would want to pump in, you know, all of these social programs that are going to cost so much taxpayer money along with all of the other burdensome social programs that America already has. And as for Joe Biden, this whole scandal might take him out 100%. He might not even officially announce that he's running in 2020 in the first place because he hasn't even officially announced yet and it's getting later and later into the race. But let's say Joe Biden gets into the 2020 race, he goes against President Trump, but again, the business Democrats and the Wall Street investors and stuff like that aren't going to look very happily with Joe Biden because he's basically Obama 2.0. He was Barack Obama's right-hand man. He was Barack Obama's vice president, for crying out loud. So it's pretty obvious that he would continue the same policies that Obama was doing in his presidency, which is, again, huge tax burdens on the, you know, super wealthy and the businesses, which basically means middle class and small business owners along with adding all of the regulations that President Trump had cut in his first term. So with that all being said, the likelihood of, you know, Trump being beat by Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders is very, very low because of all of that. And again, thanks to President Trump being a money and jobs president, he is going to be favored by the business Democrats that had abandoned the Democratic Party because of people like Bernie Sanders and because of people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. So the business Democrats have officially left the Democratic Party, or at least on their way out. All of these small business owners, the Wall Street executives and the investors and stuff like that, even big-time investors and small-time investors, all of them had jumped on the bandwagon of the Trump train now, even though ironically a lot of them were actually never Trumpers back in 2016, until they realized just how good for business President Trump really actually is. And I mean, he really, really is. Trump is really, really good with business. Trump is really, really good at fixing in the economy and cutting all these regulations, cutting all of these burdensome taxes and so on and so forth that all of these Democrats want so desperately. So yeah, I do give Trump a 80% versus 20% chance that Trump actually gets re-elected in 2020. Because if you're not only looking at the business side, the economic side, the money and taxes side of Trump's presidency, you would also see that he has huge wins in the terms of foreign policy with North Korea. He is very for, you know, America first. He is headstrong when it comes to trade with China. And also, President Trump has the gifted advantage that he's already president, and it's really hard to beat a sitting president. Especially one like President Trump who has all kinds of victories and achievements already under his belt. And as time goes on, more and more people start to accept President Trump. And actually, even if they don't admit it, they actually enjoy Trump's economy over a Obama administration economy because they understand just how good things are really becoming in America. Despite all of the illegal immigrants, despite the border crisis, despite all of that, America is actually doing pretty 
healthy right now. And yes, it is all thanks to President Trump and how business savvy he really is. And yes, despite what the Democrats say, business is a huge part of the U.S. economy. Businesses, either that be big business or small business, is what makes the U.S. economy keep rolling and being the best it can be. Because ask yourself this, you liberals, was it a government entity who created Tesla, who created the electric car? No, it was a businessman. But that being all said, you guys go ahead and let me know what you thought about this in the comment section below. And that's it for this video. Peace out, guys.